life goes, nobody knows. Keep you alone, I just mind. Don't come. We're at Air Venture in the fun fly zone. We found a nice little airplane here. We had to come and talk to someone about it. My name's Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Gary Stedman. And your company is in Canada, correct, Gary? That's correct, yes. What's the name of your company? The company is Melody Aircraft. Melody Aircraft, all right. And you're bringing in an aircraft, I believe, from the Czech Republic, Gary. That, is that, that is correct? correct, yes. And this is called the song there. Are you calling it that here, too? That's correct. So you got to sing while you fly? <laughs> You'll be singing easily when you're flying this one. So. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the performance of the airplane first, and then we'll look into the power supply. The airplane is... Uh, built as more on a motor glider concept, so it's a relatively elegant, graceful flying aircraft. Uh, it uh, performs very well. It has a 23 to 1 glide ratio. 23 to 1. It's got nice, long, slender, multi-compound wings. They're very pretty. So. They're very pretty, and it's certainly sailplane technology that's being used here, and the uh, same sailplane technology with the composite construction. Uh, all carbon fiber construction throughout. Well, the whole thing is carbon fiber. The whole thing is okay, carbon fiber. Okay, that's how you're able to keep weight down. That's correct. We'll so come back to that, but uh, continue on with the performance. Uh, this one is uh, uh, is uh, running uh, a 20 horsepower engine in it, which gives, still gives me the legal 63 miles per hour up to light speeds. Okay, fixed pitch prop then. Fixed pitch prop. Okay. Uh, takeoff performance is under 300 feet. Um, that's pretty good. Climb is a, a relatively modest 250 feet per minute with uh, my weight in it and full fuel. Uh, but the angle of climb, of course, is uh, outstanding because of the s relatively slow speed of the aircraft. And what is your typical climb speed, just to get, put that in perspective? Uh, in the range of 40 to 45 miles per hour. Okay, all right. So then you're, you're climbing out, you get up to altitude, you shut the engine off? That's uh, the beauty of this airplane, is being able to uh, soar with it. With that kind of uh, glide angle, you can... That's right. It takes a long time to hit the ground. But today's not one of those great days, not big puppies, but when you see those big cumulus clouds, that's probably a good day to go fly this guy. That's huh? exactly the whole purpose of this airplane, is when you can see those puppy clouds, uh, you don't need a tow plane, you don't need a, a support crew, you can get in it, you can go flying, you can enjoy the, the thermal weather, and... Uh, and have a ball for a couple of hours and come home. So it's kind of a self-launched uh, sailplane. Very much. That's how I got interested in it. And Are you a glider pilot? Or yes, I am. You like soaring flights? Yes, yes. All right. Well, so am I. So that's fun to talk about, Matt. Gary, we talked a little bit about the performance of the airplane. That would be with this wing configuration here, but you hinted that there's some choices in that area. Give us some details. We actually have three different ways that you can configure the wings and have the control system set up, depending more on your training and your what you're comfortable with flying. The particular one on the show here is set up with ailerons and spoilers, which is very much like a motor glider operation. Any glider pilot would be uh, looking at that, but some others would go, ooh, I don't know about that. Yeah, they may thing. not have the experience with the spoilers, and so there's an option where we have it with ailerons and flaps, which is the more traditional powered uh, flight option and, and arrangement. That uh, is uh, very all conventional. It, uh, there's a one handle for the flaps and, and ailerons work off okay. the stick. And, and what's the third configuration? Well, the third configuration is uh, something that's intentionally not an ultralight, but uh, it could be uh, LSA or in Canada, a, a, a basic ultralight there. And there's a clipped wing version of this for all of the reasons you ever want clipped wings is because it gives you more sporty performance. Sure. Now, in Canada, you've got the advanced ultralight category. It's a little different than our LSA category, although it has its similarities, but different. Could you qualify under that? Uh, the LSA is actually in intended more for two-place aircraft. And so with the single place as this, there's no reason to move to the advanced LSA category. So this falls into the basic L uh, ultralight in Canada. Okay. And the, the part 103 ultralight is so the So basic US. rather than advanced L uh, UL. Okay. That's correct. All right. How are you going to sell this airplane out of Canada into the USA? Tell me about what your plan is with that. We're able to uh, deliver ready-to-fly aircraft out of a central location in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, so, okay. So there's a, an American... U.S.-based, centrally located uh, position where you can take possession of your aircraft in its flyable condition there. Alternatively, we can ship it in a container to your door. The uh, wings are detachable on this uh, this aircraft and one other we actually was shipped to me in a 20-foot long shipping container. Ah, okay. So you're kind of like uh, Cessna. You figure if Wichita works for them, it works for you, huh? It's very nicely central located, <laughs> yes. That's great. Actually, what I was referring to, though, Gary, was the legality of how you do it. 
how is this airplane? Do you bring it in as a kit, or what's the story there? The, the aircraft comes in ready to fly, and it's legal U.S. ultralight. Okay, part, uh, meets uh, part 103 then. It does. Which means a very restrictive weight, as everyone knows, with this airplane. That's with correct. With a carbon fiber and a lightweight engine, you can make the numbers? That's correct. So this, now, you use a parachute as well, do you? Parachute is an option, yes. Ah, okay. So uh, in order to meet part 103, it's got to have a parachute in it, do I understand? No, it is, it is legal without a parachute. Okay. Uh, and it is 250 pounds without the parachute, and you are, of course, allowed the parachute option. Okay, it doesn't penalize you at all. So. That's correct. All right, so you can keep it at 250. Now, is that with four-stroke or two-stroke? That, that We would prefer the two-stroke option to uh, meet those minimum weights. Make sure you stay in that number. Minimum weights, Because yes. any four-stroke is going to add some, some weight to the system. That's correct. But for those that wanted a larger engine, do you have another capability? Can you sell an experimental amateur build? Is there a kit version? There's uh, there's not a kit version, but there is a larger engine option um, at 35 horsepower, which is... Uh, that's still, stu till still that, two stroke? That's still a two stroke. Okay. Uh, which does uh, put you above the uh, ultralight speeds, but uh, gives you some very nice performance and does not actually penalize you a lot for weight. Okay, so you'd have to you'd have to sell that one in Canada, though. If it's that's correct. That's okay, so there's your options. If you're a Canadian viewer, we have a lot of those. You can get the higher horsepower engine or a four-stroke, I assume. That's correct. If you're a U.S. customer, you pretty much got to go with a two-stroke. Which engine are you using in the two-stroke that will meet Part 103 in the USA, Gary? We're having very good success with the Polini engines. We've uh, really researched the engine uh, marketplace out there, and the, the, one of the top ones out there that we find and fits very nicely in our system is Polini. They've customized an exhaust system that meets, fits into inside the cowling of our aircraft, so it retains the uh, smooth shape. Um, it's good performance. It's very good fuel consumption for two strokes. They've really uh, worked on the fuel consumption issues. Uh, we're uh, uh, pleased to. Uh, we know that. that engine already, Gary, from the uh, guys that fly powered paragliders and so forth. That Polini is a very common engine for them to use. And that's where we've uh, taken our uh, cue from is the reliability of the of those engines in that uh, environment. Yeah, so. and I understand that particular brand. I think and Vitarazzi, another one, are using a lot of uh, uh, are, are used in a lot of other kind of. Motorsports, so they're making a lot of engines. Actually, they've been in the engine business for a long time, decades, and, 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 motor, and scooters and um, scooters. That's what I heard it was. Yes, yes. Uh, and boy, they ride those things all over Italy. So uh, I imagine they make quite a few of them. Yeah. And uh, they're very good customer service. So with regard to any issues that, that you have with the engine, it's a, you can get service from the U.S., from Canada, from all over Europe. Uh, so we like the customer support we get. How many of these songs, not just in the USA or Canada, Gary? but how many are flying worldwide? Do you have a handle on that number? I don't know exactly, but on the order of 2025. 20, okay, so it's a fairly new production airplane then, is yeah, that correct? So the, the initial ones were made five years ago. Uh, that has gone through some evolution, which is you know, part of the reason I like this, is because it's evolved into a, a better and better design as it goes. And uh, we're uh, really pleased now with the, how it's flying. All right, well, I told you I'm a sailplane and a glider enthusiast, so if I said, wow, this is, this is the magic thing, uh, we hesitate to do pricing because these videos last a long time, but get us in the rough ballpark and then folks go talk, go talk to Gary about it later. We'll give you his web address in a minute. But well, it's certainly relative, relative to the uh, self-launch motor glider field. We are, we are very reasonably <laughs> well, no priced. No question. Those are pretty expensive though. So get me in a rough ballpark, Gary, in, in U.S. dollars. In U.S. dollars in the range of forty five to 50000 Okay, well, that's a very economical buy then. It's fully built. That means, and if it meets 103, that means no pilot license, no registration, no medical, and uh, pretty much no hassle when you want to go fly. That's correct. As long as you can stay within the numbers like you said. So that's great stuff. And if I said, uh, great, that's a good deal, I'll write the check. How long would it take before I can get one? Uh, we're booking production slots at the factory for November at this point. Okay, that translates to a few months then is uh, what it would take you to get one at, for people. At the moment, uh, the spring of next year would be delivered to your door. Okay, well that sounds great, Gary. Uh, we've asked you a lot of information about the airplane, but people were always hungry for more. Uh, tell us about a website and we'll show it to everybody. www.melodyaircraft.com Alright, great. Talking with Gary Stedman today, I'm Dan Johnson. You can find lots more about all kinds of light sport aircraft and machines like this one we see behind us. Find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Gary and me here at AirVenture.